After nine years of development, the Halo TV show finally released the very first episode on Paramount Plus. And I'll be very honest, going into this, we were all very skeptical about what a Halo television series would look like. And with a lot of the discussions online, talking about some things that have come up during the promotional material of the show, many fans were very concerned on how this television series would actually end up being. So we finally sat down, we watched the episode, and surprised. Surprisingly, the show exceeded our expectations for what we expected from a Halo television series. This turned out being a lot better than what we thought it would have actually looked like. With there being a rough production history, and in general, the Halo live action adaptations in the past not necessarily being outstanding, we were going into this with a really good attitude in the sense of even if this show is absolutely awful, we're gonna have a good time with it. We're gonna watch it, we're gonna enjoy it, we're gonna laugh at some of the goofiness that we expected to have in the show, and kind of laugh at some of the cringe that would inevitably happen. And the show kind of proved us wrong in that front, where for the most part, the show's first episode does a really great job at setting up the world that it is existing in. It introduces characters, plot threads, while also having some really interesting action sequences and some well-placed character beats in there too. Now, of course, there was a lot of concern with this show when it seemed like the show would very much so be going off of the path of the Halo video games, not really looking to the games at all as a source of reference, but kind of just going off of the more expanded universe. That was something that Luke and I both were not a fan of when they announced that they were doing that approach with the series and that this would be a separate timeline, but surprisingly enough, if you're willing to shed off your preconceptions of the Halo universe and what that is supposed to look like, this show does a very good job at setting up its own universe where everything still makes sense and your existing Halo knowledge from the games and TV shows still is relevant in a sense to this show as well, where it doesn't feel like they were just completely throwing away the universe that had already already existed for two decades. The show very much feels like a Halo show inspired by the video games and the extended universe, but it also makes its own creative decisions at times. And I think the time period that they ended up choosing to use for this series, kind of making everything take place prior to any of the events we've seen in the Halo video games, does kind of allow this show to stand on its own two feet when it's trying to establish its own plot and setting for the story and for the characters. Right out of the gate, after just a little bit of setup, there is some high intensity action that is shown in this show. And honestly, we weren't too sure how they were gonna handle the action sequences in a television adaptation, but right away, it's actually pretty awesome. Like, I know that sounds weird to talk about for a television series that obviously is going to have action in it, but we definitely didn't expect the show to come out and be as gritty and brutal as what they actually showed in the show. I think a lot of fans of the Halo series or newcomers to the franchise will be surprised with the approach they took to creating some of these action sequences. I mean, some of the combat is just visibly graphic, even if it's just for a short burst before they cut the camera away. And just in general, it's one of those things where you think they would have cut the camera away before showing some of the detail to what's going on in some of the combat. And instead they're like, nah, war is brutal. This is brutal. And this is what's happening here. And you need to know about this because it's a part of the story. And it's looking like they're going to use a lot of these big moments, these action sequences that might look more brutal than what you would expect as a catalyst for other characters to have growth along the way. Not only is that something that would be really cool, but it also looks like that's the route that they're probably going with as they're using a lot of the moments that are shown on screen as kind of a building block to start establishing who these characters are, what makes them tick, and why they are motivated in the way that they are. Obviously, it's only been the first episode. We won't know how they will continue these arcs later on in later episodes, but as far as a starting place goes, you can already see a lot of the threads coming together, and I think this first episode did a great job at not only introducing Halo to a new audience who maybe have never played the games before, but also is still accessible to the player base who have played these games for two decades. And that was the really big challenge, because it really seemed like from the pre-interview period that the TV show would completely ignore the existing fan base and universe, and I don't think they did that here. Now, the 
despite the very good first impression that we're feeling from episode one, there are, of course, some goofy moments that are in this episode, as you would expect from any television adaptation of a video game. And it's not completely flawless in its writing across the board. Some dialogue does feel a little bit odd or quirky, especially in the later act of the episode when there's just a lot going on and there's these one-offs of dialogue between multiple different characters. It sometimes feels a little bit forced or feels not necessarily a natural sentence that people would say, but it's not jarringly bad at times where you're like, what is this that they are saying here? Or what are they doing? Also, some of the animation itself and CGI that is used in some of those action sequences is a little bit weird at times. I mean, it is a television series, so you're not going to expect movie level blockbuster type visuals, but there are a couple of moments where you see like Master Chief running and jumping and it's very obviously CGI'd and it just doesn't look natural. It looks almost like he is moving too fast and being pulled down when he's jumping by gravity rather than falling at a regular speed. It's really a nitpicky thing, but it is worth noting that the visuals maybe aren't a hundred percent there all of the time, but for the most part when the visuals matter, they are there and they do look acceptable. There is a lot of of flair that you'll recognize from the video games, vehicles, and weaponry that are straight out of the game series themselves, though some of the weapons might not interact with this television world in the same way they do in the video game, which if you're a fan of the games, you'll notice right away. But I will say Luke and I came in with low expectations, thinking this would be more of a meme type show to watch. It definitely did impress us quite a bit. The one point that we both talked about that we really appreciated about the show is the fact that all of the characters with their casting are actually pretty believable for the character that they're playing in this Halo universe. Master Chief was one we were the most concerned with because we know that as a show like this is going to go on, he is going to be a central part that the show will be resting on. And to put this in perspective, when the Halo standalone movie Forward Unto Dawn came out, we had this different portrayal of Master Chief with a different voice actor from the games, and it just didn't really feel believable. Like he was the Master Chief. However, with this television series, you obviously will notice it's a different voice actor and a different portrayal of Master Chief right away. However, Pablo Schreiber does a very convincing job at becoming the Master Chief. There are some moments in this episode where they look at the Master Chief's character and they start to develop the groundwork for who the Master Chief is. And I think through this first episode at least, Pablo Schreiber does a great job at making the Master Chief believable. And once you get over a couple of the things that they change, this version of the Master Chief still feels like the Master Chief you know from the video games. It still feels like it's the same character and what you would expect from the Master Chief as a character. Especially if some of the character adaptations and plot lines definitely don't go in the way that the video games and books have typically gone. I mean, there's some big decisions that happen mid to late Way through the first episode that is definitely off script from what we've seen in games and books and despite that because of the Master Chief's performance being so solid it doesn't feel like you're forced out of the story because things are going so differently because Master Chief is still rooted in the same characteristics and personality that he's always had and that's something that I did not expect them to be able to pull off and we were pleasantly surprised that they managed to. Now, just because overall we think that the first episode generally is pretty good, it doesn't mean that the overall show is out of the woods yet either. They still have to drive this plot for eight more episodes, and then of course a season two, and with how off script that first episode already was going, they're definitely going to have to do a lot of legwork in making sure that the show keeps its consistency throughout the season. Now, they are doing interesting things with some of the other characters and just the way that the plot lines are moving forward, but ultimately, the choices that are made for these other characters didn't seem jarringly bad. There's definitely a lot of things that are popping up right away that are going to play out later on in the season, but we feel that a lot of the characters are at the very least conflicted in the situations that they are even if it seems like at times some characters might be acting out from how you would expect them to in the video games per se. Another character that surprisingly is a very interesting character that I think could either become a fan favorite or just a character that the whole entire fan base ends up hating is the character Quan. 
who is played by Yaren Ha. And whether you love the character or you hate the character, Yaren Ha did an excellent job at bringing this character to life and making a believable three-dimensional character. Natasha McKellon, who plays Halsey, does a really good job at bringing across this pragmatic personality that Halsey's always been known for in the video games. And then there's Jacob Keys and Miranda Keys, who are played by Danny Sapani and Olive Gray, respectively. And these characters are playing different versions of the characters that we've seen from the Halo games. And where they end up taking these characters might not actually be the same pathway that we see in the video games. So it is interesting to see a completely different take. Some people were upset that in the video games they were white, and then in the TV show, the characters were casted by black actors. But ultimately, what would make a difference for us was whether or not the portrayal of the character was good, and whether the actors were talented enough to do it, and if the story would be good enough to hold up these characters in a television adaptation. And I think that both of these actors did a convincing and a pretty good job with these characters, especially since it seems like these characters might be going down a different route than what we would have initially expected from a Halo television series. And we don't know what's gonna end up with these characters because they are framed in a very different way than what we see in the video games. There's this really interesting dynamic that's presented right away between Miranda Keys, Jacob Keys and Halsey, which is already very interesting, but the show doesn't go overtly down the pathway of trying to force this conflict onto the viewers within the first episode. It just kind of teases it a bit. There's a little bit of dialogue that isn't necessarily written the best way, but for the most part, it does a great job at just not overdoing it, and it makes us intrigued to see what they end up doing with those plot lines later on. So as far as the first episode is concerned, we're overall pretty happy about it. We're going to go ahead and give this story a 4 out of 5. We genuinely are excited to see where this plotline goes, where this separate universe in Halo ends up going, and that's something we think that a lot of fans will be really excited to see as well. Now, we are trying to discuss how we want to approach doing reviews in the future on this channel, so if you could help us out by leaving a comment down below if you've already watched episode 1 of the show, and maybe let us know what you think, and then also, maybe leave a comment if you have not watched the show yet. We're trying to gauge if we should continue to do spoiler-free reviews or if we can dive into spoiler territory, but we kind of need to know if our audience watches these reviews before watching the actual episode or if they come and watch the reviews after watching the episode. So we kind of got to gauge it out a little bit. Also, for more videos like this, make sure you are subscribed with notifications on. Check out our channel. We cover everything Halo and then some. We'll see you guys all next time with a brand new video.